I guess mainly this only our, our Chinese character reading or Chinese speaking fan base will know what we're making in the next episode, but yeah. they'll know, right? <laughs> good one. Yeah. What up everybody? Welcome back here to another episode. First off, I gotta give you guys all such a huge shout out. You guys have still just been showing me so much love in the comments. You guys have been leaving me thumbs up. But the one thing that I still need a lot of you guys to do is hit that sub button. Way too many of you guys are not subscribed to my channel and are repeatedly watching my videos. Anyways, we're keeping her going guys. The grind don't stop. And today we're in for a very special treat. Yo, big shout out to all my Asian supporters because I was shocked actually to see how many of you commented and knew what that dish was that my dad wrote in Chinese characters. Hainan chicken rice, guys, is such a special dish to me. It means so much to me and my childhood growing up, traveling Southeast Asia with my father. I even lived in Singapore for a year when I was younger. So this dish just holds a really close place to my heart and I'm really excited to share this episode with you guys. So I'm not gonna take up too much of your guys' time, but quickly, I wanna give a big shout out to everybody who copped from the last apparel drop. Anyways, you guys know what it is, man. Thank you all for the support so much. Big shout out to to everybody who's just been showing me love in these videos guys you are the reason why I continue to do this I'm feeling like yo I'm just motivated right now and that's honestly because you guys just been showing me so much love and support so thank you for that as I said don't want to waste too much time I'm gonna go ahead and get right into this video and I'll check back in with you guys right at the end Peace. all right Sun is rising you know we're shining, you know we can't stop, and you know we won't stop. 7.30 in the morning, didn't get any better than that. Don't take everything around you for granted, trust me, because when you move on, by then it's too late. Unfortunately, in life we can't go back in time, so we do what we can right now, right? Let's go. What up, ladies and gents? Just pulled up here. We are at the where, where are we at, Chef? We're at uh, you know Santa Monica. Santa Monica Farmers Market. The reason why we are here, well, you guys know we definitely always are looking for the best possible quality ingredients. So you too. All right, guys. So we just pulled up to a. Japanese grocery store out here in Santa Monica. It's called Mitsua and And because we're making Hainanese chicken rice We want to make sure that we're using the right chicken My dad was saying that he really wants to use a specific Japanese chicken here. It's called Jidori chicken All right, if you don't know about these well now, you know, okay These are fire when it comes to snacks and they're not that bad for you I mean they got a little bit of sugar in them and some sodium, but Guys, even the sushi section looks pretty fire. Check it out. For grocery store sushi, this shit's looking yeah. pretty elite. I'm not gonna lie. So we got the... So happy. Last one too. The last one they had in yeah, the entire store. And, and yeah, so... And we called this morning and they had a bunch. And so that means that we people obviously really it. want it. Yes. So this is what a Jidori chicken looks like. What makes a Jidori chicken so special? Why do well, you like it? I think this one uh, is it's like a free range bird. So they actually run around a little bit more. So. If, if the bird runs around, it means they create more muscles and also, you know, of course, more uh, protein. So if you if you cut the legs out, you can see, you know, the legs are a little bit more jelly. We'll show them when we get back to the house, right? Right on. Okay, so we just grabbed the Jidori chicken. We have all of the ingredients. Finally, after three days or a couple of days of us trying to source all the right ingredients, which was something that we really wanted to make sure we did because it's so crucial when creating such a classic, iconic dish. Show everybody how you just reorganize the fridge, Dad. So you, you, we had a full watermelon. What did you do with that? Cut some watermelon, plus some watermelon juice. More juice here. Yeah. What's in here, the fresh orange juice? Fresh orange juice. Even took some takeout cucumbers that we didn't eat or that Kai didn't eat and he's like making like a spicy pickled yes. cucumber type of thing. All right, everyone. It is the moment that many of you have been waiting for. We're in the kitchen right now and finally we are about to get going on the Hainanese chicken and rice. Guys, I can't even begin to tell you how much this dish means to me, how much it means to me growing up and traveling Asia, specifically, obviously, Southeast Asia, where the dish is from. Right now, my dad is just behind me. He's about to lay out all of the ingredients, and as soon as he's done that, we're gonna go ahead and run through everything and show you guys exactly everything that you would need in order to prepare 
our style slash version of Hainan chicken rice. You know, I'm so glad we, we found the right chicken. So what I do is I, I get some lukewarm water. I want to temper the chicken first. So the chicken actually, they have like room temperature. That's what I need. So there's one, and today I'm doing two. The other one is a bigger one, and the other one is slightly a bit smaller. Which one is the Jidori and which one is this the... This one is the Jidori. Look, look at this thin of the thinnest. This one is the organic chicken. We have two different chickens laid out mm -hmm. here. This one is an organic free range and mm -hmm. then this one is the Jidori chicken that we picked up at the store today. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the difference and why is this so superior? You can tell, you know, this chicken, I, if you feel the body, the density of this chicken, it feels like it has been running around. First of all, I, this is a free range bird and also look at how thin the skin of the, the bird being fed properly because, you know, I don't want it too fatty. When it's too fatty, you're eating just fatty skin. But I want the taste of the meat. So you can tell, look at the fat, it's so little. If you compare other type, so this one has a fatter, you know, uh, skin, which one we're gonna take and we're gonna use. There are too many screws of rending fat. I always use a little bit of water, brings it down, and slowly, the fat is gonna flow on the top. If you don't have green onions, you know what, it's okay to use a little green on, uh, on whole onion. Put it in. Green onions, ginger. Pot comes over here. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Let it get going first. So, holding up the chicken, very simple. I'm just gonna grab this, tie, you know. Oil, oil down. Now I start with cold oil. How come we start with cold? Because you want it crispy. So everything gotta start from, you know, from the beginning of, from cold to hot. Shake it off. Ready for the next goes in there. Now one thing that you'll notice that's a pleasure for me to watch when he's cooking food is that every step that he takes has a purpose. Meaning that if he's doing something, he's already planning the next two or three steps ahead. Because I cannot tell you guys enough, even me growing up in a kitchen and I like to cook at home and stuff, the most difficult thing about cooking is timing. Gogo are always planning the next step. You're right, but you know, uh, timing is one thing, but the moment, in the moment is everything. See right now, it's starting to get brown. You know, it's starting to get crispy. This is, you know, the fat is start rending out. All right guys, so now we're about to get to one of the crucial parts of doing the chicken, which is the dunking part. You really want to make sure you don't overcook it, and my dad's going to show you guys how we do that. going into the whole chicken so they sink because otherwise it's hard to cook. Then after that, you turn into slow poaching. Now, you know, this is exactly in the, in the European term, it's like confit in oil, but this one, you confit in water. Maybe another 20 minutes to half an hour and see how the poaching goes. Now, meanwhile, get a little bit of salt. You know, you know the salt with this water, I think it's so important because when the chicken is cut, even the skin has a little bit of that seasoning, which is the salt coating on the skin. Diluted everything. So go ahead and mix all of the salt water in there, dilute it with the cold ice water. As you guys can see here, we are still rendering the fat, letting that slow cook. You start to kind of get that more like yellow color, which means that the fat is releasing, right chef? Yes, you know So I'm using two chilies, red jalapeno, they will do the job. Now, Thai chilies, shallots, Southeast Asian cooking use a lot of shallots. <laughs> oh, that's spicy. Is it? Yeah, but you can, but, ooh. oh yeah, oh my God. Okay. So if you guys are wondering what we use that fat for, we're actually gonna take that fat and we're gonna use it to cook a very crucial part of Hainanese chicken rice, which is the rice. So, the rice is not the same unless you do that chicken fat with it. Trust me, it ain't the same and it ain't done right. Now for the flavor. 
into the stock. So now we're gonna show you how to make a very classic sort of Cantonese style. It's like a Chinese Cantonese style pesto. Gong yong. Yeah, it's it fucking gong yong. Green onion, ginger. You know, uh, most important to get get the uh, the young young ginger. Didn't put in salt. There you go. One of them. So. so now we are going to be moving on to making the soy broth. Yeah. Broth. So basically the soy broth lightly goes on top of the chicken once it's done, correct? Yes. So yes. we're gonna pour the soy broth over the chicken once it's done, and now we're gonna show you guys how we make the soy broth. Chicken stock, I wanna bring it down a little bit, get a little bit, uh, the word is... Thicken it up? Yeah. Coriander, get ready to infuse. You see, you know, the reduction of chicken stock, it means uh, you have intensify the flavor of a, of, a, of a meat juice, right? Soy sauce. You don't have to do much, no more reduction. Sesame oil. Just need a pinch of sugar. Now I'm just getting a chive ready for the soup. Normally, you know, they put green onions, so you can put garlic chive, but you know, I want to top everything up, right? Get ready, that's for the, the chicken floating. Check it out guys, that is what crispy shallots should look like. Hear that sound though, right? Yeah. Now we are, we are putting the rice together. So, um, you know, as you know, we don't have a, a, a stove, so induction doesn't go in the clay pot. So I, I really feel that uh, this rice should taste really nice uh, cooking in the clay pot. How's it coming out, chef? Talk to me. Yeah, it looking uh, very good, you know. Um, I like my chicken, like with, with, with this style of chicken, I just want to just cook it just under, just a little bit. Like almost like uh, medium well, but it's still just a little bit pink as well. If you go to Japan, yeah. they serve raw chicken sushi. Oh yeah, that's right. But you know why they serve raw chicken? It's safe to eat because the feed is very particular. Well, the chicken's obviously healthy, farm, you know, organic, free range. Yeah, they feed go. it very healthy. Like, kind of saute this a little bit. Mm -hmm. See right now I'm, I'm doing, you know, make sure the oil is not overburned because you have so much flavor. If you burn, burn the oil, it means, uh, you know, the rice tastes differently. Lemongrass goes down. Just, you know, cook a little bit. Don't, don't cook it for too long. Just, you know, bring in a little, a little bit of aroma. Now, I'm going to use, uh, you know, the stock from the chicken. Everything down. Mm -hmm. Because you have some flavor in the oil, right? So. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. Just a little bit more water. New bandan leaf, soak it in, shake it out a little bit. Now, of course, uh, you need a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt, not so much, because you can always add after, you have it too salty. All right, so the chicken is ready to come out. One of them anyway is a smaller yeah. one. This is the Jidori chicken, mm -hmm. if I'm not cold. mistaken. Look at now, that. Now, don't get in cold water. I let it cool down, I just shock it. So the jelly is actually, uh, would be penetrating. You see right now, you know the skin didn't break, really nice. You know, now, hmm, salt water is in. We're gonna chill out and cool down the chicken completely. So this one, I would say, okay, son. Throw it in there, right in the clay pot, right on the barbecue, mm -hmm. let it heat up. We come back in 20 minutes and check. Let it just kind of drain it out. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and hang that up right there. Mm -hmm. Let all the liquid drain out. Mm -hmm. Now because the other chicken is a lot larger, it's still in the pot, we're still cooking that up. Look at that. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's almost done. I would say another even like five to 10 minutes done. Wow. Look at that. Cooling down the bird. Let's go and check out the rice. Alright guys, so we just finished cooking the chicken, we let it hang dry, everything is dripped out, it's all cooked through, ready to go, now my dad's got it on the chopping block right there, we're going to show you guys what it looks like. That's why I like just a little bit pink, you know? Mm. By the, uh, the, the tendon, it's so crunchy, and also, you know, little bones like this. See the juice here? Is it a gelatin? Oh yeah, that's 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 what you're looking for, that's right? That's what I'm looking for. Yes. All right, so the chickens are both cut and deboned. Look at that, guys. Does not get any better looking than that. We are now entering the final stages, guys. If you guys could just smell. Mm -hmm. How good this smells. The smell of the lemongrass, just the broth, the herbs. I feel like I'm in Asia right now, guys. Can't even tell you how this smells. If you were here right now, you would just know what time it is. I can't even tell you. This is something you just gotta know, you gotta experience for yourself. Oh, I just woke up. What time is it? It's early, right? It's early. <laughs> well, it's early for you to wake <laughs> yeah. up. Holy shit. So in goes the seasoning for the broth. Crispy shallots, mm -hmm. a little bit of chives. There you go. This is your favorite type, right? The complete of the Southeast, Southeast Asian. You know, ketchup. Ketchup. How do you say ketchup? Oh, ketchup yeah, no. right? Mmm. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, what a good dinner, Dad. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Glad. Anyways, man, you already know what the fucking deal, man. High nine chicken rice, bro. She was fucking fire, bro. Chicken, chicken, chicken and rice. I know sometimes I wish I could like shoot a little bit more at the end to show you guys, you know, how I feel and like how I react to it. But just by the time we're done shooting and everything, we sit down as a family. I just like to really use that time to sometimes just put the camera away and just enjoy some, you know, good quality family time. So, but overall, guys, thank you all so much for continuing to show me so much love. Like I said, you guys are the reason why I do this. We got more content, more music more clothing, more cooking stuff. We got a lot of fitness stuff on the way, boxing stuff coming up in the next episode too, guys. Shout out all of you for the continued endless amounts of love. I love you guys all so much, and I'll be back very soon with another